the rationalization is just a way of trying to cope with the anger. Actually, I think that this rationalization makes it uh, go deeper inside and not coping with it, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, putting some newspaper on some shit you did. It's a bit like if someone stabs me in the heart with a knife mm -hmm. and the blade goes through the skin mm -hmm. and I've got the choice, I can either try to pull it out or I can push it in. in and hide and exactly. hide and pretend that it's not here. The reason why people hide these, those emotions inside is because they don't have enough strategies firstly to cope with it, how to overcome it and secondly how to live without it. Because this grief, this sadness, they, this anger and so on, they give us uh, some uh, living energy for life. They don't change their strategies of thinking, of behaving, of feeling. That's why they are um, attracting another narcissist. As some of you know, I just spent a few days in Kazakhstan and I've been working with uh, some of my teachers who helped me a lot do my healing after being with a narcissist. A big part of the work that really helped me, aside from understanding what had happened, was being able to find the emotions that I had trapped inside that I put away. And that basically had led me to, to keep meeting narcissists and people who would take advantage of these emotions. So I thought I'd, I'd talk about something a bit different today. And I invited uh, my friend and colleague Jana uh, to, to discuss a bit. I think having a conversation is always quite interesting and having two different points of view. So first of all, Jana, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. As you know, now I've got this YouTube channel where we talk about narcissism and manipulation and toxic thought structures and a lot of the, the ways that the mind sort of maintains to toxicity or has mm -hmm. bad thoughts. But you know, as we know, as we see quite often, this is just a rationalization of what we have going inside. inside. Our emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think you've, working these days, you've also seen people who, who would rationalize things, for example, around anger. Um, but actually, the rationalization is just a way of trying to cope with the anger. Actually, I think that this rationalization makes it uh, go deeper inside and not coping with it, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, putting some newspaper on some shit you did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a good image. I, I got the image the other day of it's a bit like if someone stabs me in the heart with a knife mm -hmm. and the blade goes through the skin mm -hmm. and I've got the choice, I can either try to pull it out or I can push it in. in and hide and exactly. hide and pretend that it's not here. Exactly. Ah, you. And I think that sometimes we think if only I can push it in deep enough, maybe it's going to disappear, maybe it's going to dissolve. Uh, like, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe the heart or the body is going to dissolve the metal, but maybe also I'm just going to stab myself in the heart. One, one of the ways I see it with emotions especially sadness, because that, that, that's a pretty big one. Sadness, the function of sadness is that when something sad has happened to us, we release it through crying. So something sad is we lose someone or we lose something that we care about. Meaning that sadness is a part of life if we care about anything or anyone, otherwise we never feel sadness. So sadness to me is a little bit akin to needing to go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. If you need to go, it's a good idea to go. When you go, you don't go halfway and stop it, because otherwise life becomes really uncomfortable. The thing with sadness is we can bury it in for a long time and be in denial that it's there. Mm -hmm. But then life becomes really comfortable and all it takes is for people to start poking at the sadness and for us to close up and be afraid because it's, un it's really unpleasant to deal with, especially if we don't know how we're going to deal with it or how long yeah. it's going to go on. The reason uh, why we hide, I think, in my opinion, mm -hmm. The reason why people hide these, those emotions inside is because they don't have enough strategies firstly to cope with it, how to overcome it and secondly how to live without it because this grief, this sadness, they, this anger and so on <coughs> they give us uh, some uh, living energy for life, I mean mm -hmm. So maybe we don't enjoy our life, but we start to enjoy the sadness, this grief and so on and so forth. That's true. And that can be, that can be sort of part of our identity. Yeah. It can also give us something to focus on. 
we have the anger, we have the sadness, and then also we build coping mechanisms around. And let's be honest, the coping mechanisms, to some extent, they're rather pleasant. You know, it's an excuse to, to drink, it's an excuse to take substances, to have promiscuous behavior, to go shopping, to eat sugar, because, you know, we feel really sad, therefore we need it. But like Alfred Adler would say, that's ridiculous, is you want it, and therefore you create the situation of sadness and anger to justify the behavior. That's a bit of reverse psychology that I find is really, really helpful. And so we see that often with sadness. And one thing I noted with anger, we worked with a few people like this. They had a lot of anger inside of them, but they were always afraid to express it because they said, what if when I express it, someone else becomes angry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are afraid uh, that someone gets angry back and that's that's why they hide or maybe pretend uh, or they become angry uh, by themselves so they reverse that anger which i cannot afford for me to express in outside i forward it inside uh, what i mean yeah yes and that's that's awful that's awful situation and i'm so pity for that people because uh, their souls are crying yeah and that's why I love to be in this community mm -hmm. of Marathon yeah. because we, our community, give people possibilities to change their strategies, mm -hmm. to change the behaviors, to change their thinking, to change the acting and to change the uh, souls. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think with with anger, what we saw quite often was people who'd be afraid at how other people would react. Mm -hmm. And what was, of course, helpful for them was doing part of the energy work. We'll talk about this in a second. But also to, to rationalize it. Mm -hmm. I think it's always really important. And it's largely, I think, what I, what I hopefully do in the videos is to take an argument and deconstruct it and see if it actually makes sense. So what I often tell them is saying, well, if someone does anything to you, you have every right to be angry if you want to. Mm. And they have every right to be angry at you if they don't like your reaction. Mm. And you've got every right to stick around or to move away. But if you don't give people the feedback that something they did made you angry, you're lying to them and you're lying to yourself. Mm. And I, t I like taking like stupid images, but if someone walks up to me and says, I want you to put a watermelon on your head, you know, the watermelon mm -hmm. skin, and I don't want to and they get angry, well, what am I going to do? I mean, it's so ridiculous that logically I tell them to just go and get stuffed because I'm not going to put a watermelon skin on my head. But some people are so afraid of conflict that they'd rather do it than have someone get angry at them. And usually that's part of the shame and the guilt that they have. And I think it's important to, to, to go deep. So take extreme examples like the watermelon, which is completely stupid, but then go for other things. And if I just get upset at the person and say, well, you know, stop annoying me and trying to force a watermelon on my head, they've got every right to be angry and I've got every right to leave. When we're afraid of leaving, when we're afraid of expressing what's going on, that's when we end up getting stuck in situations. We don't feel like we have the freedom, mm -hmm. but I think it boils down to mostly having the honesty to be telling ourselves the truth of what we feel. And maybe we are unreasonable being angry, but we've got every right to be unreasonable. And if people don't like it, they've got every right to leave. And I think that's one of the, the, the beauties of human relations is we don't really owe anyone anything. Mm -hmm. And if people don't like us, they can leave. And if we end up with no friends, then maybe we need to change something. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just a balance. And it's one thing to think that we can improve things. That's fair. Mm -hmm. But to think that everything in the world is entirely our fault, maybe we're not quite that important. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. Maybe this uh, becomes um, true because many people, they don't understand that there is no mistakes. There are no mistakes in this life. Everything is just living through and gaining some opit. Mm -hmm. what, no, what is opportunity, called? experience. No, experience, experience. And getting yeah. some experience that can help us grow our souls, our minds, our bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's a crucial thing. No mistakes in the world. That's, that's a very good, very good point, very important. Indeed, it's not mistakes. Mm -hmm. In systemic psychology, we like to talk about, they call it positive and negative feedback, positive and negative mm -hmm. feedback. The idea is, imagine you have a line 
and you have a target. And you want to shoot a cannon to hit the target, but you don't hit the target, you hit another point. The feedback you get is that you did not hit the target. But you don't expect to hit a bullseye on the first shot. Mm -hmm. You expect to shoot somewhere, and then depending on the feedback you get, you calibrate. And if the feedback is that the distance is getting bigger, that is, uh, what is that? I can't remember, it's one of the feedbacks. Basically, the distance is getting bigger, so you have to do something different. And the idea is a bit like if you're, if you're surfing or you're sailing a boat, you don't go in a straight line. <clears throat> you go off in one direction, then based on the feedback you get about the waves, about the wind, you change and you adapt. And to me, life is roughly that, is we know we're not set off on the right direction. We know we have to change things. So either we pretend that not getting it perfectly right the first time is catastrophic, but that's just unrealistic, or we listen to the feedback and we calibrate. Mm. And like you say, it's not a mistake, it's just feedback that helps us change our behaviors, mm -hmm. navigate, mm -hmm. adapt, and increase the likelihood we get close to our goals. Oh, yeah, that's great, that's great. Cal collaboration is my favorite word, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Fred, uh, can you tell me please, uh, what's the difference between people uh, in Europe, maybe mm -hmm. US, which you are working with, and here in Kazakhstan, you experienced working, oh, uh, yeah. in, uh, in terms of these uh, feelings, in terms of this uh, life experience, maybe, Uh, is it different to work here and there? Maybe? Yeah, it's. I find it, the, the, the lot of differences. The first ones that come to mind are that here most people, women especially, but most people, find it easier to let go of emotions mm -hmm. and to get out of the head and just feel and feel the body, feel the, feel the, 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 the tension in the body Uh, a lot of people find it easier to scream, so when we work we find points where emotions are blocked. We work on those points, it's painful, so we scream and let it out. In Europe, I find, Europe and US, people have hyper-rationalized the bizarre idea that all we are is a bunch of cells in a body and that's it. Yeah. So. It's just, it's just, we're a mind in a body, we don't know, understand how any of it works. And beyond the physical world that we see, there's nothing. You know, which, which might be the case, but it's a pretty bad predictor, mm. first of all. Secondly, it can't be disproven, because any other proof just gets dismissed, and largely makes people miserable. So it tells me it's a pretty unhelpful philosophy of life. And we see the, exa the results in Europe, it's, it's a catastrophe in the US, like people are so miserable and emotionally constipated, it's, it's insane. Uh, here I find people tend to be very ready to let things out, yeah, open, ready to, to do the work. In Europe I find there's a lot more disbelief. Um, it's like, okay, well if you want to live with that kind of life then you can do it. Um, that's one thing. And another thing is, I find in I find here, it's much easier to find women who are willing to lean into the feminine energy and men who are willing to lean into their masculine energy. And what I observe is if we, if people are a couple and they work as a team and both lean into their natural energy, they're much more balanced. I take this image of two people standing opposite each other, holding hands and leaning back a bit. Yes, both people can stand in both energies, of course, like, da, it's normal. However, it's easier when we can lean into where we are stronger. Mm -hmm. And here I find women are more willing to be feminine, to be soft, uh, to so basically to embrace the feminine archetype a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And of course, like we saw yesterday, some women can be really masculine and really competing with men. I just find that here women are more willing to, to lean into the feminine energy and men are more willing to lean in the masculine energy. And in Europe, I find a lot of women who are very reluctant to do it, to lean into the feminine energy, and men who are afraid or reluctant or don't know when they do it, it's, it's clumsy. Mm -hmm. um, so those are two, two big differences I see mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I'm here. And I find also that when I work here with men and women, Everyone, people seem much more trusting, mm -hmm. much more willing to accept. Mm -hmm. So of course I have a combination of masculine and feminine energy, like everyone does. Mm -hmm. And 
I, it's possible for me to calibrate what I'm showing to the person I'm working with, and I find people are more willing to receive what I'm giving them. In Europe, I find there's much more resistance. Women are, um, are less trusting. They're more afraid, mm -hmm. generally. Uh, and for men, it's not comfortable to be feeling just, you know, a presence of masculine energy. Um, it's weird. I can't. I got some ideas why it might be, but yeah, that's what I what I notice here. Mm. That's that's a great experience to work from different parts of the world, actually. Yeah. And you can compare, and you can um, take some strategies from here, from there. Because uh, when I was um, looking how you uh, work, mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that uh, you uh, work with brain mostly. And you such a good um, transition between working with brain and then working with emotions. Your uh, story about the elephant and the rider, yeah. that's marvelous, that's marvelous. And uh, now I understand, when you explain me, now I understand um, why you work with brain in such a way such ra rationalization for you is the main point because you successfully use these strategies in europe and you come here and we actually have uh, a lot of people who like to rationalize who needs uh, our brains to be satisfied <laughs> with some explanations uh, that's great that's great Yeah, I mean, what, what I found, of course, being, well, being being European is one thing, then also I tend to be hyper-rational, and as a lot of you probably know, if we go through difficult life experiences, it's easy to rationalize what's going on, mm -hmm. to think, to if cope. things are, yeah, exactly. To cope, and to cope with it. Exactly, to cope with it, and try to understand, and think, if I can understand, maybe I feel safe, if I can, if I can understand that which is difficult to foresee, it reduces uncertainty, and so mm -hmm. we come up with a lot of, a lot of, Well, nonsense. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I think such people are more vulnerable to narcissists, because when narcissists tell their stories, there are always gaps in the story. Mm -hmm. And if we're used to joining dots and rationalizing, we can sort of join dots where there's nothing to be joined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas a more regular person might just go, listen, that story doesn't add up and that's that, so I don't trust them. But we're used to trying to understand when stories don't add up and think, well, maybe it's this explanation or that explanation. Mm -hmm. And what I find is when we're very rational, it's hard to, to just feel, feel the body, feel the emotions. Mm -hmm. When we begin to understand the function of emotions and how it works, it's easy to let the brain just accept what's going on. And once the brain calms down, there's more space for the emotions and for the body. And I, I would like to ask you another one question. Sure. Uh, what about the um, sex sexuality mm -hmm. uh, in Europe and uh, here in Kazakhstan? About, uh, I mean, what I mean, uh, here in Kazakhstan we have some strict um, rules in our families mm -hmm. for uh, especially especially for little girls mm -hmm. and from uh, that time uh, sexuality is closed by our parents so uh, everything is restricted you don't have to you you are not allowed to go out with them guys little guys actually 13 maybe 11 years old but my parents are afraid about some sexual abuse maybe or something like that And they are uh, restricting these uh, relations, this sim uh, sympathy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, puts a huge pressure on our women, and that's why uh, most of our women are closed. Uh, the uterus. Uterus. The uterus is uh, so closed. They are so. Um, feeling so uncomfortable when it comes to such uh, spicy themes, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, what about Europe? Women in Europe? It's just my interest. If you, if sure. you, if it's not uh, connected with your channel, you you may not <laughs> answer. No, that's fine. It's it's a very interesting question. Uh, I see uh, huge differences, and I think Europe has gone from being very restrictive a hundred years ago. Mm. I don't know if it was more or less restrictive than Kazakhstan today, but being 
incredibly uh, permissive and promiscuous. You talk here about women who have blocked mm -hmm. sexual energy. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it feels that quite often it's incentivized to be as open as possible. Mm, the other part, uh, the, the other uh, extreme, you mean? The other the extreme. extreme. It's, I mean, there are always different, different energies there, but you know, we, we, we see strange things where, how should I put it, between a scale, if we take a scale between being completely closed and completely open, mm. Europe and the West has been, it's not homogenous, but we find quite a few people in Europe and the West who push as much as possible to extremely open, mm. and the more open the better. And you know the different reasons, mm -hmm. not judging, I'm not observing. Judging. Mm -hmm. I find that when people are too closed and don't feel good, it's not helpful. But when they're a bit too open, they tend to not really like it that much. Uh, because of because it backfires, because it's it's is devaluing a lot. You know, it's sort of mm -hmm. the question like, is your body a playground? Yeah, I think I understood now. Uh, you mean that uh, we are getting trauma uh, because of this side extreme and they are getting the trauma on the other side of the extreme. Yes, it's, it, it's, it's close to that. I mean, when I work with people and I talk to people mm -hmm. and they're really open and we get out all of this, all of this noise, all of this mess, mm -hmm. few people say, I think the ideal number of sexual partners in my life is 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. People don't say that. Yes. And people don't say it's 100. Mm -hmm. And most people tend to go, well, if I had stories that didn't go anywhere, I don't want to feel guilty about it. Yes. But I don't necessarily think that twice as much is twice as good. Mm -hmm. Because at one point, you do things with people that you don't really like and don't really respect, and you're not respecting yourself and your body. Mm -hmm. And it's also, you know, promiscuity is a, is a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's going, oh, well, people told me I couldn't do that, so I'm going to go crazy. It's like, yeah, well, you can do that. But, you know, what is, what is the outcome? What's the result? Mm -hmm. When people go on, on crazy, promiscuous, you know, what is it, binges or adventures, mm -hmm. generally they don't feel really proud and clean and happy, and they don't feel like they respect themselves. Uh, but you know, it's 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 different with men and women, and mm -hmm. you know, there's there's different pressures, and we decide who we listen to and when we listen to them. Mm -hmm. The 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 notion that you can't do anything, that's also I find a bit condescending because I believe that a 13 year old girl can be explained that there's some situations you don't want to put yourself in. These are the signs, and we trust you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get things wrong, well. Let's hope it doesn't end up being too bad, but we trust you to pick up on the signs. Mm -hmm. um, but that also requires having responsibility. And it also it's difficult because it's, you know, it's a very powerful force that we have, the force to reproduce. Uh, you know, we've got different, different, different motivations. You know, w women, of course, want to get attention mm -hmm. and have options. And then it's about finding the right balance between what do I have to give in order to get the attention I want? Like, can I get attention by being me and being nice and having conversations and being beautiful? Or do I have to take my clothes off to get attention? And it's not easy to balance that. And for guys, and there's a the thing of, well, you know, we've got specific drives. And something I notice quite often is most guys have their hearts broken they were young. And when they get promiscuous, it's a coping mechanism to try to mend a broken heart. And after we work with people, men and women, They tend to value more quality relationships. Mm -hmm. They tend to be less interested in promiscuous behavior. Um, on the one hand, on the other hand, they tend to be less hard on themselves if they tried something and it didn't work out, mm -hmm. or they made, call it a mistake mm -hmm. somehow, or you know, they, they followed their instinct and they, it didn't turn out the right way. And then if, if they like someone, maybe they don't feel too guilty about it. It's about finding, always finding balance and listening to ourselves. Yeah, I think that's the most important yourself. thing. Being yourself. It's always for uh, every culture, for every person all around the world, I think that being and accepting myself is uh, the greatest, uh, greatest, um, how is it called in English? Challenge, 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 challenge. Yeah. yes. The biggest challenge because, uh, because of this, 
some uh, things, not some things, not bad, not not bad, not good, but they happen. Something else that comes to mind there is that the more promiscuous we are, in other words, the lower the barriers we have to mm -hmm. going into bed with someone, mm -hmm. the easier it is for narcissists to take advantage of us. Mm. Having physical intimacy with someone is not innocuous. It's not the same as just scratching someone's back. There's more of an energetic exchange. And be it a man or be it a woman, when we share intimacy with someone, it creates a connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's easier to feel or to be guilt tripped to maintain the connection. When someone says, for example, let's say you spend a night together, you realize the, the energy isn't working out. You don't want to see the person. The person says, I feel like you manipulated me. You know, it's, it's, I can't believe someone did this to me again. You know, I told you, I told you that to me it was something important and I, I trusted you and you took advantage of me. So the, the different psychological mechanisms that can get hacked this way, there's reciprocity, there's breaking trust, there's guilt tripping, shaming and so on. And I've seen it, you know, experienced it, but seen it happen quite often where something that shouldn't have amounted to anything became too long and too toxic because it was difficult to extract ourselves and that's one reason why I find if people want to date seriously it's a good idea to have the first date in the daytime in a cafe and go for a walk because if we don't want to have a coffee with someone and have a conversation maybe we shouldn't get into bed with them because otherwise it's going to be uncomfortable getting out of bed be it a man be it a woman if someone's primary focus is trying to get into bed with whoever, maybe we don't want to be just anyone, mm -hmm. and it's their right to do it. But then, you know, it's, it might be a good idea to understand where it's going. It can be nice to be spontaneous. You meet someone and it can be the beginning of a beautiful relationship. But it can also mean that you end up feeling awkward the next day. And or what happens used. often, yeah, or used, what happens often is one person go, thinks, this is really nice, I want to hang out with this person, the other person just wants to run away. So it's about also, it's not just narcissists, it's also people not being in a good place or looking for validation. Mm -hmm. And if we can avoid that, that unpleasant feeling that we've sort of, you know, not respected ourselves, well, maybe we feel a bit better. Mm. Yeah. And uh, another question for you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Uh, you told me about narcissist. Yeah. So, in the energy terms, how do you feel them, or maybe how do you explain uh, how this uh, disease, yeah, is a disease, uh, how it appears, or how do you cope? How do you cope with it? So, for the people who suffer from it. Yes. Yes. They make everybody else's life terrible. <laughs> That's how uh. they cope. They try to make everything awful. So no, no, no need to, uh, no need to feel the energy and so on. Uh, you don't work with them with the, the healing uh, with your energy. No, I, ha I haven't, I haven't really done it, mm -hmm. largely because they haven't really asked to do it. Yes, I mean, they, they think that they are okay. Yeah, exa mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, it's sort of a spectrum. So you have people who are. In the middle, you've got people on the extremes. So once the extremes don't want to work, you've got some people close to the extremes. And they might work a bit, sometimes can calm a few things down. We had one person, when I did this training, who was pretty high on the spectrum. And we were able to get her to calm it down. But deep inside, she had... And I think with a lot of these people, there's a wound, there's a lot of shame. They don't want to address it. They have contempt for everyone. They think that they're very smug. It's like, hmm, I'm so clever. I'm so much better than everyone else. So working with them is difficult. They don't want to do it. Often they don't open up or they try to play a game uh, and they're not honest, they're not sincere. Mm -hmm. And a big part of the work we do is about specifically sincerity and opening up and letting go and opening our, our heart, our soul uh, and just accepting instead of playing games. But they always play games. You know, they have this fake mask, fake personas or many different masks. Mm -hmm. They change the mask depending on the people. Uh, but for them to let go of it is, is terrifying. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why they would, because it's like, if you've got somebody who walks around town asking for free coffee and someone always gives them free coffee, well, why would they stop? At one point they have to start paying, they can get free coffee, just find other people. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're not willing to do the work. That's, um, yeah, that, that's my, that's my <laughs> experience. Um, and otherwise, yeah, the, the, the way you, you recognize them largely is, you see, 
to me, the big thing is you see how they react to frustration. Mm. If they want something and they don't get it, are they sort of okay? Or do they start attacking people and getting angry? Yeah, angry. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. so perhaps a few a few words, I'll probably re-edit re this for the order. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want to say a few words about the work that we do here? Yeah, I, I would love. Uh, I think that Natalisha and Sasha, uh, they made a great community and they are doing a great job in order to help people to overcome all these stresses, all this confusion, all this madness, sadness and so on uh, that we are feeling and we're uh, collecting throughout all our life, entire life uh, and um, that's why I love this community that's why I love to work with uh, people when they feel relieved after such a great tension which they felt, which they were like uh, um, walking with in the backpacks mm -hmm. and then when they come, when we work with them, when we um, take off this backpack and they are feeling so relieved so great that they want to live the greatest life even after and not to not to collect not collecting stop collecting these um, miserable things mm -hmm. in life so to, to give you an idea the way a session works is mm -hmm. we ask people to start breathing then we open energy channels. Energy channels that we work with are only there to clean, to remove things that are trapped that shouldn't be there. You can imagine that someone breathes and we run like radio waves through them and each radio wave unblocks different things, different parts of the body. Usually what happens is that emotions are collected in the lymphatic system and if we don't express it, we're emotionally constipated and it gets, it gets stored. Mm -hmm. And when we run the, the, these energy channels, people usually start coughing. Also, when we press around yeah. here, mm -hmm. people start coughing. They cough, they spit a lot. The saliva that comes out is not regular saliva, it's much thicker. Uh, and they cough, things start clearing out. Then you can work on specific points. Anger. Anger typically mm -hmm. is stored in the jaws. And you see that a lot with... Fear here. Uh, fear here. Mm -hmm. Those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you go like this, you see a lot with narcissists, they have a lot of anger, you see them mm. do like this, and you see the micro expressions and the flashes of anger. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a few well known celebrities, if you look at videos of them, you see these flashes of anger. Um, one is married to a royal, you see the flashes of anger, and then you, you, you see a few of these. Stripes. Another one was in a trial with a famous actor, and you see these flashes of anger on the faces, and you go, well, it might be from something else, but that's anger. We, I won't say what it is that caused the anger. When you see the anger coming out, there's anger below the surface. Mm. Um, so that's anger, that's fear, sadness is down here. And quite often, there's something for you to check. If you find it difficult to breathe deeply and you feel that your diaphragm is blocked, maybe you've got sadness inside that you're not releasing. Mm -hmm. So there's a few, things, a few things to check. So we work on this. When we work on it, I don't think anyone's working right now. No, no. they're working. They're working? Yes, oh, seriously. We can, we can maybe... I don't know. Oh, Let's no, see. No, over there. Okay. Yeah, we can take it and just um, see and yeah, I think let them see. Yeah, this one is okay. There oh, we go. There. People working behind us. Working behind. There we go. Mm -hmm. So. So what we, what we see a lot with, with this is people start releasing the anger. Once they release the anger, a lot of sadness comes out. And it's usually deep, deep, deep sadness that goes back a long time. I mean, I remember when, when they did it with me, I suddenly I felt my, my belly moving like when I was a baby mm. uh, that I hadn't done for a long time because mm. I'd been taught to keep sadness inside. Mm -hmm. And what I found is narcissists are a symptom of things that are hidden if i'm in a good place they can't manipulate me mm -hmm. because oops, there we go if i'm in a good place they can't manipulate me because i'm okay with the sadness and anger and, and everything and shame and guilt mm -hmm. it used to be much easier to manipulate me and now when when people try doing playing the the guilt thing mm -hmm. you know i expected you to do that like okay it's your expectations only you're only yours not mine exactly why yeah. should i why should i why should i follow 
-hmm. Yeah, but I had the expectations. Okay, you had the expectations. Well, did it work out? No. <laughs> yeah, so I can blame myself or you can ask yourself where are the expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, did I specifically promise anything? And even if I promise something and I don't keep my promise, then I'm an idiot. Okay, that's life. But uh, but the thing is that you have a uh, re um, you have a, how how is it called? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a right to change your mind, and it's okay. But uh, the thing is to uh, make new um, contracts mm -hmm. instead. When, when you know that uh, you change your mind, uh, then you go for that person and tell, hmm, you know, uh, I thought about it and now I changed my mind. So uh, maybe we can um, some, some, somehow uh, re renegotiate. renegotiate this point. Yes. That's, that's a very important... Uh, I see that often people say, well, I promised I must do this. It's like you promise, you can change your mind. Yeah. And I say, if th things were reversed, let's say someone promises to go to a concert with you and they call you up and they say, listen, I'm really sorry, I know I promised it, but something happened. I'm not in the mood, I'm too tired. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really sorry, would it be okay if I stayed home? You, would, you wouldn't say, no, no, you promised. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you've, you've got... You caught the virus. You're going to come with me nonetheless. You know, of course, you stay home, chill, just relax. But if they didn't dare tell you, you'd feel insulted. Because what? They don't trust you? Mm -hmm. Like, well, what kind of a friendship is that? That's not respectful. It's respectful to tell the truth. Something changes, you say it. And if people get angry, it's their right to get angry. Mm -hmm. But don't hang around people who get angry when something changes, because things changed often in life. Mm -hmm. And if people expect you to have flexibility, but they never have any, Mm. Don't hang around them. Yeah. They've got every right to be that way. This reminds me of when I did the training, there was one person who was bizarre and had some levels of toxic... Oh, you're hearing, by the way, you're hearing someone getting the work done. Uh, so releasing these, these emotions. So this person had some level of toxic behavior. We can show. <laughs> Sasha is now working. <laughs> There we go. See a little bit. <laughs> so someone had some level of toxic behavior and I was asking, you know, this person has been acting weird around me and why, there we go, wait, why, why do you let this person hang around us? The person isn't healthy. Mm -hmm. And they said, she's got every right to be unhealthy and you've got every right to tell her that you don't want to do stuff with her. Mm -hmm. You know, but what are we going to do? We're going to coddle you or protect you from unhealthy people? There are unhealthy people. If you can't deal with her, how can you deal with other people in the world? She's got every right to hang around and be unhealthy and be annoying and be pressuring. You've got every right to tell her no. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And she's got every right to be angry. And you've got every right to not care. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody, it's like the, the, the arbus, the watermelon. If someone wants you to wear a mort watermelon on your head, you don't do it. You don't care. It's like, that's a stupid idea. So I thought that was that was pretty interesting where they were not trying to protect us mm -hmm. but give us the tools with which to just shrug off the unhealthy people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And did you tell uh, what we are doing um, after, after this triggering point? No. I can tell then. Go ahead, ah, please go do. Ahead. <laughs> after uh, pu pushing these triggering points, uh, which uh, Fred told about the lympha, about the stuck emotions in, the, in our body, after... Um, working on this after uh, speeding and spilling and so on and so forth, crying l maybe laughing <laughs> it's just uh, sometimes. sometimes happens yes and crying mostly crying release this pain uh, and after that um, the special thing to do is to give a person the more love the most of love I have in order to fill these gaps which were Uh, created by our cleaning uh, companies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We are actually a cleaning company. Uh, so, uh, in your body there is uh, some um, uh, triggering point, uh, there is uh, too much stress, uh, we press there, we relieve it and there is a gap. And then we need to fill in this gap. And uh, then when the person is filled, uh, when he is um, Uh, full of uh, positive emotions with love uh, we can let him go and uh, let him uh, live his his life um, 
by his own by his own and the the main point is uh, not to uh, not to make those people be um, from your energy dependent, dependent thank yeah. you uh, to be dependent uh, from your energy as a healer or as uh, just a specialist helping specialists any uh, because some people are getting used to um, collecting collecting these uh, miserable things in their lives coming to uh, some specialist uh, the specialist is working and then he feels the relief and then he goes back to his life and uh, leaves it uh, collects the mis- this these miserable things uh, again mm-hmm. and they come again to the specialist and so this circle never ending yeah. uh, but the point is uh, to gain some new strategies and that's why uh, n- we are talking now not only about uh, this special day maybe of working mm-hmm. uh, but also about the marathon marathon of uh, happy opportunities here uh, leading here in Kazakhstan uh, and this marathon it gives um, very whole, whole how, how to tell complete, complete yes. yes thank you complete com- complete and thorough um, strategies and in order to identify what's wrong uh, what to do with this wrong and uh, how to change it uh, what steps to, what steps to take and also uh, what to do instead and uh, to make it stable make these results stable uh, uh, because lots and lots and lots of trainings they are uh, giving some um, methods information maybe practices but still a person is not lead through this transformation and here we are going uh, we are doing uh, what we are transforming helping people transform and we are leading them and we are uh, cherishing and we are caring and we are feeling with love and giving all our love inside that's that's very true i see a lot of programs that are quite superficial mm-hmm. they explain a few things they don't address the underlying issue which tends to be the emotions Mm -hmm. and they don't give precise complete strategies to be acting and behaving differently and the thing is if if we keep sadness inside of us like someone behind me we keep sadness inside of us we put together strategies to avoid it so as long as we're avoiding it you know we can have different different mental ideas but we still have the sadness that's unaddressed once we address it we don't need the strategies anymore Mm -hmm. then the question is what do we do differently Mm -hmm. they're sort of bulldozing everything down or burning everything down and seeing what stays and some things stay the stuff that stays is is us Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was you know noted it sometimes when we work with people they they really collapse and crumble and one guy we worked with he at one point he just took a, a fetal position like a little baby and was just crying so much. And the thing with, so of course I remember being there myself, the thing with it is, when we're in these situations, we're sort of completely alone with our pain, the physical pain and the emotional pain. But the beauty of it is, we're completely alone, but we're surrounded with people who are all supporting us. They're not trying to take our pain because they can't. Mm. They're not trying to reduce our pain because that's that's not the point. They're not soothing us, they're not lying to us. They're just respecting our ability to take responsibility for our life, Mm -hmm. to face the pain, to feel it, to release it, to let go, and then to build back and listen. And also, main point that they believe in people and everyone. Believe that you can cope, Mm -hmm. you can. And that's why it's so, uh, ensuring that I will cope, I will do it. Yeah. I have I have someone supporting me. That's very true. They they believe we can cope and they respect us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's something I see, you know, with the work we do here. We have different experience to everyone we work with, and we're equals. There's respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something I always want to do with my videos. Is I share ideas. I think the ideas are well. I found them helpful. I respect all of you. I respect individuals as being my equals, my peers. I see many healers, many gurus, uh, many people who who talk, who put themselves on a pedestal like they know better. Mm-hmm. We're just sharing ideas. The ideas are not mine. I might have combined different ideas, so it's a bit like 
a chef combining different ingredients to make a sauce, but the ingredients are not the chef. Not the chef. Yeah, they came from nature. <laughs> so yes, he can pick them and choose them and grow them. It comes from nature, um, and and I find one of actually one of the things that that I see systematically with toxic people is they put themselves in a position of being figures of authority and they talk down to others. And this dynamic of having people talk down to us is a huge part of the problem. And that's why narcissists hate people who who disagree because it's rejecting their authority. Mm. But if we're equals, it's not about authority. It's about comparing arguments and listening to each other and agreeing to disagree. And this is the most respectful way of seeing things. So it's easy to go from a relationship with a narcissist thinking, this person created this and it was bad. Now I need someone else to replace. Mm -hmm. But if you replace the person, you keep the same structure and the structure is the problem. It's not the people. Narcissists are relevant. They're annoying, they're relevant. Could be one, could be another. There's nothing personal. But that asymmetric dynamic is the problem. When we start replacing it with people who just ask us, like, well, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What kind of life do you want? You know, you can you can try to build a life with a narcissist. Okay, what's that going to look like? If it doesn't look like something you want, well, what are your alternatives? You know, yeah, it's sometimes scarier to be without someone who's dominating our life and being like, um, you know, uh, what an autocrat in our life. But maybe it's scarier to be with that autocrat, and it's less scary to be with other people. But then it means you have to figure things out. Instead of being a child who does what they're told, we become an adult to take responsibility, which it isn't easy. But that's yeah, that's one of the it's one of the things. It's much easier to do that when we're no longer carrying all of this stress and all of this trauma and all of these emotions. And what uh, what methods do you use mostly uh, when coping with helping to cope um, victims of uh, narcissists? You do do you use only coaching or maybe energy healing or maybe the mix of them? How do you work with them? So the the different possibilities for working. One one part I think that's really important is what I what I do with the videos is entering the logic and destroying the logic. Mm -hmm. So that instead of getting manipulated by thinking, well, you know, they have a point. Mm -hmm. You know, to say go, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's like the the, the The image of someone saying, I want you to put your hand on a burning frying pan. Mm -hmm. And when you don't do it, then they start shouting at you. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, of course it doesn't make sense because that's physical pain. But it's emotional pain, it's much easier to go, well, you know, maybe they had a difficult childhood, so I should put up with it. And maybe there's hope and maybe that the hope thing is terrible. You know, maybe there's hope, yeah. Maybe there's more than 0.1% possibility things work out. But maybe it's pretty close to zero. Mm -hmm. If it's a low probability, occurrence then maybe don't bet on it mm -hmm. so part of it is the head another part and I have this program that that, that works on this and I want to re-record that is partly about the so deeper understanding mm -hmm. and also deeper healing um, being able to 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 reframe more philosophically what's happening and making choices like what life do I really want mm -hmm. do I want a life with lies or a life with the truth But am I really willing to embrace the truth, even if I'm not, even if I don't like it? And that's about, I think, realizing more, sort of more philosophically. And then there's another part, which is, which I can't do on YouTube, which is great. Uh, and I might get to do some sessions and show some, show some of them. And that's when we do the energy healing. That's when we really release the pain that's inside. Uh, we release the, 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 usually the anger, and then comes out the sadness. Then there's the fear. Um, there's the heart that's closed and quite often that happens people have been hurt they close their heart therefore they attract people who will be able to play around with this rather than people who are in a good place mm -hmm. um, it's sort of if you're if you're in a rather average place it's unlikely you'll start a relationship with a person in a good place because you won't be attractive to them and they won't be attractive to you there's usually some kind of balance between the yeah matching mm -hmm between the two people which is one reason why the better we're doing the more likely we are to attract good people and after being with a narcissist if we don't do all of the healing mm -hmm. we're probably going to be having another relationship with another narcissist mm -hmm. at one point mm -hmm. uh, so one reason okay, strategies they don't change their strategies of thinking of behaving of feeling that's why they are um, attracting another narcissist Exactly. That's that's the person who ends a relationship with a narcissist and thinks, maybe if I start dating someone else, I'm going to be able to forget this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're not in a good place to bring anything good to anyone. Mm -hmm. And other people, maybe they deserve to be more than simply 
a way to not think about narcissists. You know, maybe it's it's a bit more respectful. Um, so yeah, when we when we're able to to understand this and then work on the underlying things, then usually, you know, we'll be meeting more narcissists and more toxic people because it's about ten percent of the population. We'll meet them, but they'll have less and less effect, and we'll learn to cope, and we'll learn to shrug off when someone says, you know, I want you to wear a watermelon skin on your head. Be like, well, that's weird. You know, somebody walks up to you in the street and goes, you're a bad person, you're an idiot. Instead of thinking, oh my goodness, I must have done something wrong. I go, well, you don't look like a happy person. You know, or when, when, well, when you see someone who is wagging their finger in a video going, well, narcissist did that, you should be this, you should be angry, you shouldn't do that. Whenever I see that, I feel like someone is talking to a dog and the dog is going, ah, and the person goes, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 and the dog's, what? 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 We react this way instinctively, mm -hmm. but it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, before we'd see it and go, oh, well, that sort of makes sense. Now, if you start seeing it, when you recognize the patterns, you think this person is not in a happy place. This person is not actually helping people. They're eliciting more anger and more annoyance mm -hmm. from others mm -hmm. because it makes people addicted. And it's really good for, you know, bringing in clients, but it's pretty cynical. It's not, it's not great. But when we release the anger, we go, that person's trying to make me angry, but I'm no longer angry. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with it's it. It's no longer triggering you. Exactly. That's really important. When things trigger us, mm -hmm. it's that we have something inside of us that needs to be resolved. It, it's like if you pour disinfectant on somebody's skin that doesn't have any kind of injury, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But if there's a cut, it stings. If something is triggering, But this is even better. If some, if you run your, your finger on your skin and you feel there's a bump and it's painful, you look and there might be a splinter inside. Mm -hmm. So if it's triggering, you have to figure out where is the pain, remove it so that you don't have this anymore. Instead of try to cope with being triggered or tell people to not touch your skin because you've got a splinter inside. Mm -hmm. If you have a splinter inside, take it out, mm -hmm. especially if it's under your foot, because otherwise every time you walk, it's going to be painful. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's largely about here, what kind of life do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want, yeah, do you want a life where you're happy? Do you want a life where you're in a good place? Uh, or do you want a life where you're miserable? And how many people believe that they deserve a life where they're happy? Mm -hmm. And we see that a lot here. You know, we ask people, do you love yourself? And it's like, hmm. Or they, no, sorry, they say, well, people don't love me. It's like, yeah, well, do you love yourself? Mm. Well, why should someone love you if you don't love yourself? It's like, but so many things are wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So what? Mm -hmm. So what? If you don't love yourself, people won't love you. But maybe I can make people love me. Yeah. Manipulation, but, manipulation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How about you just love yourself and see what happens? Mm -hmm. If you love yourself and see what happens, then, you know, that's okay. If people don't love you, it's their right. They don't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. We don't owe them anything, but, you know, if we try to manipulate outcomes, you know, regardless of why, it's manipulation. And that's one of the things, actually, when, when we're actually not uh, being honest about our anger, someone does something that makes us angry and we don't tell them, mm -hmm. and that's manipulation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we want to control the outcomes. Mm -hmm. Reality is going, you did that, I didn't like it. They're allowed to shout, okay, it's their choice. It's a poor strategy, but whatever. And actually, many people, uh, in my opinion, many people, when they uh, face uh, this um, reaction of a person who tells, stop, stop doing it with me, I'm not okay with this behavior, they actually think, mm, okay, it's not okay with her, maybe I will leave because I need this such a, such a strategies, such um, behaviors and she doesn't allow me to do it. So mm, I'll leave and uh, find someone new in order to practice my, <laughs> uh, that's, my behaviors. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, the, the, the weird thing is when it comes to behaviors and mental pressure, we tolerate it more easily. Mm -hmm. So someone says, come on, come on, let's, let's, let's go on a weekend. Let's wait, take me out on the weekend. Let's go that. It's like, ah, oh, you're being annoying, but okay. Mm -hmm. But if somebody came to you and just would headbutt you constantly, you know, every, every minute, one, you know, headbutt you one time, pretty quickly put an end to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by going, you know, but I want you, I want to be able to headbutt you. Mm -hmm. So, well, I don't want it. Then I'll go and headbutt some boils. Mm -hmm. Be my guest. Go on, go and headbutt them. 
But because it's not visible, mm-hmm. it's much harder to put the, the granitsa, to put the boundaries. Mm-hmm. Whereas when, it, when we understand it, when we visualize it, it's much easier to say, it doesn't work. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't let you headbutt me, so I'm not going to let you berate me, insult me, put me down. And if you make any snarky, any mean comments, you know, huh, that wasn't very good. Why would you talk to someone you love that way? If you really love someone, you don't try to put them down. Well, we worked with this woman yesterday who was viewing relationships between men and women as a competition. The goal was always, hello, it's our friend Vasilisa, who is one of our, one of our colleagues. <laughs> Vasilisa, say hello to YouTube. Hello to YouTube. Vasilisa, oh, good grief. Storm is coming. So, Vasilisa, the storm, she flies away. So, we'll end with this. So, this woman was always in a competition with men, trying to break men, to be stronger than men and better than men. And I told her, you know, a relationship is like a doubles tennis match. And you you can try to play with the best player or try to be better than your co-player. Mm-hmm. But if you win as a team, you've won. The yeah. question isn't who scored the most points. The question is, did you win? Men and women, in a relationship, and a couple, we're a team, we work together. If we work together, things are easier. And I think the tent is collapsing. <laughs> tent is collapsing, so we need to go, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Jana. Thank you, Frederick. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, I will uh, maybe link uh, Instagram, my Instagram, down. Okay. But I'm uh, speaking only in Russian there. But For now, maybe, maybe they can um, direct me. Absolutely. So if you want to hear more from Yana, find her on Instagram. I'll put the link in the description. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Take good care. Bye.